Thank you for joining back again. I hope you enjoy this session as much as I enjoy teaching. Here is a quick agenda for this session. We are going to see the definition of operating system. We are going to see various list of operating systems available in the industry, which is quickly followed by Unix evolution. We are also going to see the difference between Unix and Linux. Also, what are all the various Linux flavors in the industry? Also, we are going to look at the difference between open source, closed source and mixed source operating systems. Also, two important features. One is what is the uh, Unix and Linux main features, which is quickly followed by OS basic architecture. Let's get going. Before I start, I would generally like to have my sessions as interactive as possible. But here that wouldn't be an option. Please don't mind me asking a few questions, even though I know that I cannot hear what you say, but I would like you to say answer to yourself. For example, if I ask you what is an operating system, how would you respond to it? As per the Wikipedia, an operating system, in short, which is also called as OS, is a collection of softwares. That means OS is a software that manages computer hardware resources and provides common services for computer programs. So there are two diagrams I have listed here. One, the view of operating system from horizontal view. Another one in a circular view. If you look at a circular view in the first place, we have an operating system in middle, which is surrounded by various hardware components. And here you have software entity, an application or a user, right? Here at the bottom part, you have hardware. Operating system is sitting on top of hardware. On top of operating system, you have application or user. If you want me to define operating system in a simple terminology, an OS or operating system is an interface between hardware and user. That's what you can even see from here. An operating system is an interface or a mediator between hardware components and software. Here are the few examples of operating systems available in the industry. The oldest one, disk operating system, which was a product by IBM. And in my opinion, it is not very user friendly. And we have a Windows operating system, which is of course one of the most popular GUI operating systems in the industry. We have Macintosh, we have Unix, and we have Linux. If you haven't heard about the other operating system, I'm sure at least you have come across the operating system called Windows. Because it's almost, uh, uh, almost on all of the local PCs or work home PCs if not in 100%, at least 50-60% market of uh, PC market is occupied by Windows operating system. Now let me ask you the basic question again here. If Windows is an operating system, right, if Windows is an operating system, what are these Windows 95, 98, 2000, XP, 7 and 8, and probably the 9 and 10 that's coming up? I repeat, if Windows is an operating system, what are these guys? Exactly. If Windows is an operating system, these guys are flavors of operating system or the various versions of operating system. Similarly, when I talk about Unix or Linux, even Unix and Linux are also operating systems and like Windows, even they have various flavors or versions. Now, before we get into this concept of Unix and Linux, let's first understand how Unix came into the market, the Unix evolution.
that was around 1969 1970s there were two programmers at AT&T Bell Laboratories Brian and Ken they wanted to develop an academic project on a video gaming and they were looking for a platform that gives them the faster response time I repeat their objective was to have a platform that has faster response time but the only operating system that was available in that time frame which gives at least a reasonable response time was multix if you look at the word multi I highlighted multi in quotations here that means this operating system was designed for n number of things it tries to give a best user interface it tries to give a best uh, programming interface it tries to give a best uh, response time okay it tries to have a best interaction with hardware it concentrates on n number of things so these two guys were not happy with the response time it provides that's what you expect out of a video video gaming right when you press next or left you have to immediately turn left right so they were looking for an alternatives for this operating system that's when exactly Dennis Ritchie invented C language so these guys started writing a new operating system completely in a C language which gives them the fastest response time possible these two guys initial goal was to write an operating system which gives or which concentrates on only one thing unique thing called response time that's why they re, they named that operating system as uni you see the one word uni that means single right so well there were n number of theories in the market but this is something i really liked in the evolution of unix okay now once they developed unix operating system they kept the source code open okay they kept the source code open from then various industry leaders that time such as SCO Unix, HP, uh, Solaris, IBM these guys took the base source code and they started adding their own features on top of it and they started releasing their own commercial versions into the market before I take you to that uh, slide let me walk you through the theory here Unix is a name of family of operating systems developed at Bell Laboratories around 1969. It was largely the creation of two programmers working at Bell Laboratories, Mr. Ken and Brian. It was initially used in academic environments and of course because it was so popular so it spread quickly to commercial environments also. This has got 90% of it code developed in C language and 10% in mission specific assembly code such as add, add, multiply, mul, things like that. If I, if I walk you through the evaluation PPT here, the slide, this is when the source code got available open in the AT&T Bell Laboratories, right? Multics, then Unix came and AT&T started releasing their own versions. That was the same time these guys took the initial source code and started releasing their own versions into the market. Sun, HP, IBM released their own platforms. Okay. And trust me, it got the enormous support from the industry. It was initially designed for response time, but it quickly changed to a number of other things. Once people started releasing their commercial versions and when time passed pass by, you know, the industry was facing an, a bigger challenge. Okay. The challenge was migrating from one operating system to another operating system. For example, if I want to migrate from HP operating system to IBM operating system, it was becoming a big challenge because HP has their own standards of writing operating system and IBM has their own standards of writing operating system. Even though base code was same, they, they have added n number of features on top of it and it was really becoming a nightmare. So that's when actually somewhere in 1995, whole industry came together and sat and, and agreed to some standards saying, guys, we are having a major problem in portability. 
portability is nothing but migrating code from one operating system to another operating system with a minimal effort. So I understand we all have our own capabilities, but at least follow some basic standards. What that means is, irrespective of operating system, LS command should look like this only. When I type cd command, it should change the directory. Right? We'll see those commands in uh, next classes. But they sat together and agreed for a single unique specification standard, which is called as POSIX standard. Portable Operating System Interface for Unix. Okay? If you are familiar with database languages, there is a, a language called SQL. SQL is a open source. SQL has 92 standard, 99 standard, 2003 standard, like that. Unix also has a standard called POSIX. I don't care what features you want to give, but at least make sure your minimum requirements are like this. So that the people when they wanted to migrate, the portability will be very easier. Okay, that's in fact one of the major features of Unix or Linux operating systems. Okay. I hope you are clear so far. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, email me at the email address given in the first slide. Okay. If you are clear so far, let me ask you this question. Have you heard any time before that open source, closed source, and mixed source, these three words before? Right. Now, have you given a thought on what is the difference between three of them? Well, probably you might have heard open source and closed source. Probably if you are uh, into this stuff, probably you might have heard mixed source as well. Right? Now, there is no complicated logic behind three of them. Open source is nothing but the source code is open. Okay, You can take the source code, you can compile it, you can add your own features and you can recompile it and you can distribute it freely. Right? Closure source is nothing but you don't have source code available. For example, AX. If I want to add a new feature to AX, no, I have to depend upon IBM guys. But there is a concept called mixed sources. If I am rich enough, okay, I'll take a source code from, for example, Red Hat Linux. I customize it and I use it for my specific needs. For example, Oracle Enterprise Linux. They took a source code from Red Hat Linux. They customized it for Oracle product needs. Okay. And they released it into the market. Okay. But there is a little agreement down here. So, you know, when Red Hat Linux sold their source code to Oracle, the expectation is that Oracle should not distribute the source code outside freely. Right? It's only mixed source is nothing but it's only for few clients it is free. The source code is freely visible. But for rest of them it's just only the binaries executables. Okay. Now if I do a quick recap, what we looked at so far is we looked at the definition of an operating system. Okay, if I take you back. So we looked at a simple definition that OS is an interface between hardware components and application users. Then we looked at various examples of operating systems. Then we looked at how Unix word came in picture. Then we looked at the Unix evaluation, how industry took the base source code and released their own versions. For the portability sake, how they come across uh, the standard called POSIX. Then we looked at open source, closed source, and mixed source in a Unix world. Now then what is this word called Linux? From where it came? 